Good morning. This is Sean Snyder with the Iowa Association of School Boards. This morning I am going to talk about and demonstrate the transportation funding toolkit that is available on the association's website. The toolkit is open to all that are interested in learning and using uh, the information regarding transportation funding. Included on the toolkit is a brief informational paper uh, it's a two-page document, and one of the things it shows is how the cost, especially in fiscal year 2014, varied between school districts significantly. Um, it has the impact on the per pupil of funds available for school districts for instruction and shows the differences between those school districts. Uh, one of the things I'm going to demonstrate to use is the transportation cost comparison tool. Um, one of the things I just want to point out is we have a link to the school finance formula recommendations that were provided to the legislative committee that met back in December. One of the items in that report uh, referenced uh, uh, fixing the inequity in the transportation funding across the state. Additionally, I'm going to uh, provide information on uh, the legislation that's been brought fourth this legislative session that address the transportation funding issues. There's currently actually six bills that uh, provide some type of uh, aid to eligible school districts in regards to transportation funding. So I'll, I'll talk about each one of those bills and I'll demonstrate the analysis and the impact by district for the information that we have on each of one of those bills. The Transportation Funding Toolkit is on the Iowa Association of School Boards website. If you go to the school board's main page, um, scroll down under the Legislative Advocacy Center, there's a link that has the Transportation Funding Toolkit. You click on that link and then that will bring you to the page. It has all the information. Again, the first uh, piece of information is that info informational paper. Again, just a really brief uh, document that's just uh, talks uh, briefly about the funding issues across the state. The next link down is the tool that I'm going to demonstrate. When you click on that, it opens an Excel file. You can open that Excel file. It'll bring this information up. And what this tool allows you to do is you can select the school district that you're interested in and we'll select Carroll for this example. And it is alphabetical order so you should be able to find your school district. Click on Carroll and what this does is it shows information from fiscal year 2011 through fiscal year 2014. So the first uh, set of information brought up for the Carroll School District is that the total net operating transportation costs for the district from fiscal year 2011 through fiscal year 2014. And it shows for each of those years. So in fiscal year 11, 2011, uh, the school district had a net operating transportation cost of just under $800,000. In fiscal year 2014, the amount had uh, gone to 889000 now the table below provides a transportation cost per student and it's based on the certified enrollment of the school district. The reason that we're using certified enrollment is because when this information is compiled and used by the legislature, the comparison that is made is often based on the transportation cost per student using the certified enrollment. And that's how that information is presented to the legislature. And much of the legislation that's being introduced um, is based on using this this data. So when we look at uh, Carol's information, and again it shows from fiscal year 2011 through fiscal year 2014, and the uh, items highlighted in yellow are the transportation costs per pupil. So Carol in fiscal year 2011 was about $464 per pupil. And by 2014 the amount had gone up to just under $538 per pupil. Um, the information over on this side just shows the annual change. So you can actually see that in fiscal year 2014, the cost per pupil amount had gone down slightly. Now the information under the yellow highlighted area is basically statewide statistics. The first one is a statewide median. The next one down is a statewide average. The next one down is the statewide maximum, the district that has the maximum per pupil cost. And then down below that would be the statewide minimum. Um, 
The table down below the graph actually shows the information comparing the school district to the statewide median and the statewide average. Um, it's basically the same information pre presented in, above the table, however this just shows it graphically. Um, you can see that in this Carroll School District, um, they are above both the statewide median and the statewide average. And the one thing to kind of key in on is when, when we're talking about the legislation in a few minutes, um, often the, the eligibility for a school to receive some type of transportation aid is going to be whether or not they're above the statewide average. So you can see in this example, we're using fiscal year 2014 data, the Carroll uh, at 538 is above the statewide average, which is about $317. Another item of note in this table is that it does, based on the fiscal year 2014 data, it does provide a ranking of where Carroll falls in the state. So it goes from the highest per pupil amount down to the lowest. Using that comparison, Carroll ranks 89th out of 338 school districts. The table down below is another comparison tool, and again, it, it compares Carroll to the, to the overall state statistical amounts. Um, what this does is it takes a transportation cost per pupil and compares it to what the district generates in funding for the regular program district cost per pupil. So you can see that in fiscal year 2014, Carroll's transportation cost per pupil of $538 uh, was uh, reflected or generated about 8.8% 8 .8 of its total regular program district cost for regular program funding. Um, and again, it compares it to the statewide median and the statewide average in the table below, in this graphic below. And then it also shows the district rank. Um, and really, you know, the, the rankings from the table above to this one should not vary too significantly. And you can see that Carroll is 89th in the transportation cost per pupil and 92nd in uh, regular program funding percentage. Additional information that's available here is a listing of all the school districts. It has the same data that was provided in that previous section, except it has it listed for every school district. Um, and again, it has fiscal year 11 through fiscal year 14, the percentage change from fiscal year 14 to fis from fiscal year 13, um, where the district at as a percentage of the statewide average. So looking at AHST, they are 129.2% uh, of the statewide average, so that means that they are above the statewide average. And then this is their transportation percentage of the regular program per pupil cost for the school district. And then, again, the indicator of whether or not the transportation costs per pupil are above the statewide average. So this will either be a yes or a no. And again, it, it's all in alphabetical order, and this does print out nicely if you would like to print that file out. In addition to the list of all districts, uh, the information can be brought up by both House District and Senate District, and we'll choose Senate District. So if you go in and click on this cell here, this gives you a filter, and you can go in and select uh, the specific legislator that you're looking for. And we will use uh, Representative, or excuse me, Senator Dix, and click on his and that'll bring up all the school districts within his Senate district. And again, it provides the same type of information and that shows how many of the school districts within that, in, within that Senate district are above the statewide average. And there's 26 school districts in Senator Dix's Senate district, and 13 of those school districts are above the statewide average. So that just provides kind of some background information on each school district's transportation costs and their transportation costs per pupil. The next uh, piece of information is um, the link down below that is the report that has the recommendations to update the school finance formula that was presented to the, uh, the legislative uh, St interim study committee. They uh, were discussed uh, potential changes to the school aid formula and the report that was provided to them from uh, the ISB and the other coalition of education groups included uh, recommendations for transportation funding. And that report is available to download here. Now there's currently six pieces of legislation before uh, the House Education Committee that uh, address the transportation funding issue. Uh, the first bill is House File 84, and that 
there's a link to the bill right here, and then right below that link to the bill, there's an analysis of House File 84, and we'll review that. So again, it's an Excel file. You open this up, and again, this has information on what the bill does, and House File 84 creates a transportation cost supplement program that provides a district that has an average transportation cost per pupil, and again, it's based on that certified enrollment that's greater than the statewide average, that the, this district can use local taxes to fund those transportation costs that are above the statewide average. It does uh, require that uh, participation in the program and, uh, would need voter approval, and if approved, uh, the district can fund this with either local property taxes or a combination of local property taxes and local income surtax. Now we'll look at Adair Casey in this example. And again, these are all in alphabetical order. So you click on this, and this will bring up the information for Adair Casey. Um, and that's highlighted in the yellow area. Um, the first bit of information is just the fiscal year 2014 net operating transportation costs uh, for the school district, and then their per pupil average. And the next uh, column over um, indicates whether or not the school district is eligible for participation in this program, whether or not they're above the per pupil average. And this district is, so they would be eligible, eligible to implement this program uh, if they receive voter approval. The amount that they could receive um, would be $93,000. And since this is going to be generated from local taxes, um, in order to generate $93,000, the school district would have to increase their property tax rate by $0.64 cents per $1,000 of taxable valuation. Um, the table down below is just kind of a state route statewide summary of this proposal and again it shows the fiscal year 14 data so that you have the total net operating cost of all school districts in the state is 152 million dollars the statewide average is just over 316 dollars per pupil this next column over shows the number of districts that would be eligible for this program if they received voter approval there's 230 districts 230 out of the 338 or about 68 percent of the school districts would be eligible and then the maximum amount of impact of this, if all districts, all 230 districts did this, is they could uh, levy $26.1 million. And in addition to this, you can click on the See All District Impacts, and this will bring up uh, a listing of all school districts in the state. Again, it has the net operating costs for the school district, the per pupil average, whether or not they'd be eligible for the transportation cost supplement provided in this bill, House File 84, the amount of supplement that they could um, raise from their property taxes, and then the impact on their property taxes. And again, this is for, for every school district in the state. So now we'll review the next bill, which is House File 250. And there's the link to the bill. Well, we will look at the analysis for the bill. And again, it's set up the same way as the last file I demonstrated. It's an Excel file. You can open it up. Um, again, it, it, the first thing it does is it tells what the bill does. And House File 250 provides it an annual general fund appropriation to fund transportation assistance aid. So school districts with an average transportation cost per pupil, and again, it's based on that certified enrollment that is greater than the statewide average, would be eligible to receive the aid. So this is very similar to the last proposal. However, there's no voter approval required, and there's no local property taxes. This is going to be funded through state dollars. So the school districts that are above the statewide average would be eligible to receive this aid. And I'll use a Dare Casey again. So you can see that the amounts are similar. Um, this provides the same type of information. Would, would the school district be eligible for transportation aid? Yes, because they're above the statewide average. And the, the next column over shows the amount of uh, state aid that they would receive, which is the same amount that I just showed you in the other bill. However, now this is all state funding rather than local property taxes. The table down below just shows the overall statewide impact. The same 230 districts would be eligible, and the amount generated for these uh, 230 districts would be $26.1 million. And again, you cl click on the select uh, all school districts, 
and it provides the same information whether or not the school district's eligible for the aid and then the amount of aid. And the funding amounts are exactly the same as House File 84. However, this this bill provides all state funding. Uh, House File 84 was all local property taxes. So then the next bill is House File 320. We'll click on that. And again, it's set up the same way. Has a, what the bill does is House File 320 creates a supplementary waiting for transportation funding. And again, it's the districts with an average transportation cost above the statewide average will receive supplementary waiting. And that's going to be waiting that's generated through the school aid formula. So the funding will come through the school aid formula and it will be both state dollars and local property tax dollars. And for this example, we will use Davis County. And you can see that Davis County, uh, their net operating cost in fiscal year 2014 was $703,000. Their per, per pupil average was about or $595, which again is above the statewide average. So under this proposal, yes, they would be able to receive the supplementary weighting. The amount of funding total generated for the school district would be $226,000. Of that amount, $199,000 would be state aid and $27,000 would be property taxes. This next column over is after you apply the, the funding from the supplementary weighting, as I said, okay, what, what does that get down the, the transportation per pupil amount to on an average basis? And you can see that when you apply the funding, uh, the additional funding is now the school district will be at $403 per pupil where they were at $595. So the next question I asked is, does the funding amount generated through the school aid formula get the district down to the per pupil statewide average? And remember, the statewide average is about $316. So no, this funding is not sufficient to get the district down to the statewide average. Again, the next table below that, just kind of an analysis of the statewide impact. Um, 230 districts will receive the supplementary weighting funding. Um, the total amount generated through the school aid formula will be about just under $21 million. $18.2 million will be state aid and $2.5 million will be local property taxes. And then these last two columns on a statewide basis just say, will these additional funds get the district down to the statewide average? Um, and in this case, 70 districts will get down to or below the statewide average, and 160 districts will not receive enough fun funding from this provision to get them down to the statewide average. And again, you can see the, di uh, the impact by school district, and that's available as well. The next... Uh, bill is House File 359. And this one creates a transportation cost supplement levy um, in all districts would be eligible if they have voter approval. Um, the amount levied is not to exceed the total amount of the district's actual uh, transportation cost for transporting public school students. And again, we'll select Davis County for this example. Um, so the net operating cost for Davis County was $703,000. The per pupil average was five ninety-five, dollars approximately. Um, is the district eligible for the transportation cost supplement program if the voters approve? And the answer is yes, because all the school districts would be eligible under this provision uh, as long as they have voter approval. And again, the amount that they could levy for, it's, a, it's going to be funded through local property taxes. Um, they could levy for their net operating transportation costs, so $703,048. And then this last column shows what to the property tax rate would have to be in order to generate that $703,000. So the school district would have to increase their property taxes about $2.40 per $1,000 of taxable valuation in order to generate that level of funding. 
Again, you can see the statewide amount. All 338 school districts would be eligible for this provision, and statewide, um, this could potentially increase property taxes roughly about $151 million. And again, if you click on the See All Districts, you can see um, what that means to the school district and what the uh, property tax rate would be to generate uh, the levy amount. There's been two additional bills that were recently added this week, um, House File 431 and House File 432. Um, analysis of House File 431 is available, and it provides a general fund appropriation. However, it does it over a three-year period of time. And... Um, so if the school district has an average transportation cost per pupil greater than the statewide average in fiscal year 2014, they would be eligible to receive the state aid in either fiscal year 16, 17, or fiscal year 18. So we will choose Carol for this example. So Carol, so it'll be those 230 districts that would be eligible for this provision because there's 230 districts that have a per pupil average above the statewide average. So Carol's av per pupil average is $537. That is above the statewide average. Because of the way this bill is written, um, the, the, the amount of funding is going to be available in one of three years and Carol would be eligible to receive transportation aid in fiscal year 17 for a total of $365,000. And again, you can see uh, the statewide summary of this is in fiscal year 16, there's going to be 50 school districts that would receive aid, totaling about $8.7 million. In fiscal year 17, there'll be another 50 districts that will receive aid, totaling about $8.7 million. And then in fiscal year 2018, about 130 districts would be eligible, and again, for a total of $8.7 million. So the 230 districts that are eligible to receive aid, um, their aid's only going to be received in one of three years, and you can Click on the Select uh, See All District Impacts, and that'll tell you if you're eligible, and if, if so, what year the district would receive aid in and what that amount of aid will be. And the last bill is House File 432. Again, the, the file set up the very same way. And we will use Western Dubuque for this example. So what House File 3432 does is it creates a supplementary weighting for transportation funding. Um, it's slightly different than the other one that, that created the supplementary weighting for transportation funding. Um, this one is actually capped at $15 million. The funding is going to be generated through the school aid formula. Um, it's going to be based on a supplementary weighting, but the Department of Man Management will determine what that supplementary weighting is in order to generate the $15 million for, for uh, transportation aid. So for Western Dub Dub Dubuque, their per pupil average is $641, and again, they, you, you, the district has to be above the statewide average to be eligible for the supplementary weighting. Western Dubuque is. So the amount of uh, funding generated through the school aid formula will be just under $550,000. About $480,000 of that will be in state aid, and $69,000 will be local property taxes. Um, after applying the funding to the overall net operating costs, the new transportation cost per pupil would be about $455. Um, and the next question is, does the funding amount get them down to the statewide average? And the answer is no. Um, there's not sufficient funding uh, at $15 million to get these districts down to the statewide average. So then the next table just shows the statewide estimate. The total funding through this is $15 million. Of that, $13.1 million is going to be state aid, and $1.8 million will be pro local property taxes. Um, of these 230 school districts, none of them will actually get down to the statewide average. However, 230 districts will be getting additional aid. And again, if you click on the See All District Impact, you can see how much of funding the school district will receive, how much of state aid, how much is property tax, and then what their per pupil average will be after they receive this aid. So 
So those are the bills that are currently uh, before the legislature. Now it is funnel week, so uh, we will find out by the end of this week whether or not any of the bills made it through the funnel. But I, I must say that uh, in my time working with the legislature, I do not ever remember six proposals being brought forth on to address transportation funding. I think the most I ever remember was two bills. So I know legislators are aware of, of the transportation funding issue. And it's, if nothing advances this legislative session, there's always a chance that next session that this will be, again, a topic that will be addressed. Um, again, I want to thank you for participating. Um, the information, the toolkit is available on the IASB website. You can click here to access that information. If you have questions, concerns, or comments regarding the tools, if you need help using them, you can please contact me. Here's my phone number or Patty Schrader as well. We would be happy to help. Thank you and have a good day.